so previously we had pretty big news about Roblox's grass, about how they are planning to add more features to it later in the future, and this time it's again something terrain related. Where this update on the other hand is about water, about shorelines to be more exact. But right off the bat you can see a comparison, a presentation of Roblox's default water on the left and the new shoreline system on the right. And what exactly changes? So this update is going to make it so the connection between the terrain and the water is going to be more seamless and it's going to behave like an actual water. And again from the picture on the left there is this voxel connection that's clearly visible where the example on the right is more realistic. But to go over this dev forum post, here they are saying that with shorelines now fully released, we will be migrating all places to the shorelines and will fully deprecate the old water technology. So that means that the old water on the left isn't going to be supported or used anymore. And here is the plan of the deprecation. So we are already past the migration phase. This is the date of the deprecation, where they are saying that the old water technology will be fully removed and places that have the water will experience visual changes, where places using both water and the land will now have shorelines and might get some artifacts if you don't upgrade them manually. And here are just few notes to keep in mind, but I don't want to bore you guys, so let's move to the upgrade now section, where to upgrade this, you just need to go to the terrain editor, the create tab, and then upgrade to shorelines dropdown, and there is going to be the upgrade button. And also running the upgrade script provides the best result for shorelines. And now what is going to happen if you don't upgrade? The engine is basically just going to make it so you might have artifacts like this one right here, instead of a seamless transition that was shown up here in this example. So now that we are past the most important information that I wanted to show, I'm just going to go through the process of enabling the shorelines. And then I will just go back to the dev forum post and give you the rest information later. But before that happens I need to take a minute out of your time and tell you that I am actually making my own new GC items, as you can see right here. So, so far there is only two of them, there is the slime shoulder pet that I've made for a tutorial, but I've also released the dark draconic horns. So if you like the item or you just want to support me then you can go check them out. I will be making more of these later once, well, I get the funds, because it costs over 2000 robux to publish one item, so please go buy them, and also leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, but anyways. So now that we are in studio, the new places are already going to have the shorelines, and there is no need to change anything. So I can just basically go into this place, and just really quickly make some terrain. So I'm just going to draw some grass, and then just add some water. And then just smooth it out really quickly. So here you can already see the transition between the land and the water. Like the water doesn't connect to any groups of boxers from this already existing terrain. It basically just goes down on its own like this. And it's both on the rock and the grass. So it makes for a basically seamless transition. And to talk a bit more about these voxels, like normally whenever you make terrain, I'm going to make it on one brush size, like you can see the voxel connection happening basically right here. Where the water on the other hand, like I said, isn't connected to these groups, so now the water behavior is different because it's not going to snap onto these voxels. And this is just much nicer than the previous water we had. And now I'm going to go onto a different place to show you how you can upgrade to shorelines. And it's as simple as just enabling the terrain editor. And then you are going to have the upgrade settings and shorelines right here. Where it says click upgrade to improve the way water joins with terrain and the shores. And this upgrade will be only applied to this place. So if you have a lot of places that can be upgraded with shorelines, you need to go through all of them manually and then press on upgrade. And if you press on the click here to learn more, it's going to take you to the previous dev forum post. But this note right here also tells you that you might need to do some manual fixing, and that the upgrade can be reverted right after its completion using the undo command. But I'm not going to upgrade yet, I'm just going to make some terrain again just to do some comparison. Now you saw how this was basically snapping to each other, if I for example undo the command and just add a little bit of rocks right here, what happens right here is the voxel snapping. And if I continue going like this, 
is going to snap to these rocks. And instead of this being a flat shore, a flat surface that was going up and down, it's basically just a pointy line connected to these rocks. And it doesn't look too natural. Especially with the fact that you can basically see this happening. You can for example also see this section right here. Or I just found this artifact too. So the current water has a lot of problems and that's why the shoreline update was made. So if I go back to this tab, except I don't see it anywhere, it's supposed to be the terrain editor and the create tab, but apparently I don't have it anymore. So I think I'm just gonna have to save and then reload this place. Okay, and now that we are back, I'm going to enable the terrain editor again. And there is this option. I think this was because I had the import generate or clear selected and this tab wasn't showing. So for a good comparison, let me just press on upgrade and you can see what's going to happen with the water. And as you saw, it removed all of these snaps between the water and the terrain voxels. And now it's sticking to its own group, where it's not going to interfere with the rocks or the grass. And it's going to have the again seamless shoreline, like this. Previously, the connections that were for example right here are now gone. The same for example for this artifact and also this deformation that was right here. So now you can see that it has a way better behavior and a different visual effect. It also makes the terrain look more realistic. And also on this side note, I really quickly need to ask a question. Why is that the surface of the water can give reflections on things, but we still can't get a mirror shader? Like you can clearly see the grass being reflected, same with the clouds and the sun. It's made so it gives a water reflection and not a proper mirror reflection, but still. And if I move this tree right here, it's still going to reflect the tree. And same with my Roblox avatar. But hey, maybe I'm just being too picky with stuff, but anyways. So that's everything there is to this update. And I'm going to go to the dev forum post to give you more information. So we left off of the what happens if I don't upgrade. And now there is the impact on places with only water, where they are saying that if your place only uses water and not anything else, if it comes to terrain, the water voxels might look slightly inflated in the X and Z axis as shown below. So this is the old water, these are the shorelines, and the black outline is what happened to the water boxes after changing to shorelines. And here they just give you a solution to this problem. And then how you can upgrade after the old water deprecation is basically the same. They will be keeping the upgrade script until December 13th. And then there is also the shorelines full release post that was made before the migration post. Where this previously was also a beta feature, which came into full release. And all the information they give you is basically the same, like this line right here saying that the shorelines improve the look of the water, but it changes the water behavior when it meets with other terrain materials. And proceeding with the upgrade might change your place's water bounds. And another warning is that you cannot revert the upgrade, that means after you run the upgrade script, once it's saved. So for example, if I just went to the terrain editor and then had this tab again, then just press on the upgrade and then for example, just save with Ctrl and S where it would say saving to Roblox and then save new changes, I wouldn't be able to revert with Ctrl and Z or the undo button on top. But apparently I still can and maybe that was actually just changed. Okay, you can basically just see the changes again. But there is also this section saying scripting water with shorelines. And it's saying that if you are interested in scripting your voxels, once you've done the shorelines upgrade, check out the read-write voxel channel API, which they released specifically for that. And it's a new voxel API to work with shorelines, where they've added a two-band new API to modify voxel data, and then tooling updates to better edit water, specifically the shorelines. And they've also posted a link into the documentation. And there is the write voxel channels, which is actually a terrains method. So this is basically just telling you how to generate a random terrain in region. And it's a method for setting a region of terrain using a dictionary of voxel channel data. And then this method takes the region, resolution and the channel. But more information about this is going to be down in the description. And then this API update now allows you to read and write to any available channels, which wasn't possible previously. And again, the read and write voxel channels take these three parameters again. Then there is some new types, then the inputs of the arguments, 
and a voxel channel data usage, where both of these types are built around the voxel channel data type. And this is saying that the voxel channel data is a 3D array, which contains the channel data of a voxel at the coordinates of a terrain region. And there is the additional nodes, where the water in NAM is supposed to be a solid material, and if the solid occupancy is equal to 1, but the solid material is different than the in NAM, then the liquid occupant will be set to 0. And again here is how to use the water, and you can copy this code and paste it into your game, where there is an example of code using this API, to generate some extremely simplistic terrain with hills and water. So let me just copy this really quickly. So I'm just going to copy this into a script, and then just hit run. And it actually generated some terrain, but the water is inside of a base plate. And ignoring my previous example right here, you saw that it was pretty smooth for a terrain generation, and this piece of terrain actually looks really nice. Maybe that's because I've had these trees right here and these like bushes, rocks and other foliage, but you can see all of the stuff that I talked about previously. But going back, so lastly there is the tooling update which was improved to support the new shorelines technology, and these tools correctly write to the solid occupancy and liquid occupancy when you are editing your shores, whether editing the water or the solid materials. And this will give you the ability to clean and edit your shorelines going forward. So yeah, that is basically the shorelines update. And as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day, and see ya guys!